So let's talk about the most basic adjustments one can make to an image, which are through adjusting the exposure, which can be done here, and the laser power, which can be done here. First, I'm going to check whether our sample is in position. So I'm going to go to Live. It is. I am going to just center this area with a lot of cells, and I am going to switch to the 20x objective so that we can get a slightly higher resolution image. Uh, you can see that this is not perfectly parfocal, so I'm going to adjust the focus. And there I am in, a, in an area with a 20x objective with clearly labeled cells. So what kind of adjustments can I make? As I said, there's two main parameters that we're going to adjust. One is the exposure time. The other is the laser power. If we increase either of those, we'll increase the bleaching. If we increase the exposure time, um, we will increase how long it takes to acquire an image. So let's explore some of the options. So let me go in the other direction. If I lower the exposure down to 10, to 10 milliseconds, you can see this looks very noisy. The reason the image did not get dimmer is because we have auto contrast on. If we had removed auto contrast, or if we remove auto contrast rather, and change the exposure, we will see the intensity of the image change. So it can sometimes be convenient to have the auto on so that the brightness of the image doesn't change and we can evaluate quality by looking at the graininess of the image, sort of the noisiness of the image. So a good way of checking how much exposure one needs is by doubling the exposure and seeing if that doubling results in a increase in quality that is beneficial for whatever analysis you're going to do. So you can see as I cycle up, I can see improvements in the quality, and at some point, those improvements become hard to notice or maybe irrelevant for a typical analysis that I would want to do. Something similar can be done with the laser power. So if I go back down to 10 milliseconds and I start increasing the laser power from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, we can see the quality of the image getting uh, better. Now, obviously, if we are... If we go too far, we run the risk of bleaching. And how to tell, we, we need to run a small time lapse to actually tell. Or if it's really bad, we'll be able to see it just uh, in the live mode as an increase in the noise, or if we turn off the auto as a decrease in the intensity uh, of the image. So I'm going to lower the laser down to something more reasonable. I'm going to turn auto back on. I'm going to go to a longer exposure time. And I'm going to discuss one last thing with respect to exposure and laser power, which is this low power mode. So if you want to lower the laser below 2%, which can be a good idea if you either have a bright fluorophore or you have something in a live cell, uh, which is very sensitive, uh, you can't. This slider only goes down to 2%. If you want to do that, you have to engage this low power mode. When you do that, uh, you can go down below 2%. So if I just stop this for a moment, and if you look at this with low power mode, my maximum laser power is now 10%, whereas without low power mode, it's 100%. But when I'm in low power mode, I can go from 10% down to 0.2%. So if you wanted to lose a very low laser power, you could by using this low power mode. Now, be careful that when you turn this off, it jumps up by a factor of 10. So if you have a high, you know, like a relatively high percentage within this range, be careful when you change it if you're live, because suddenly the laser power can jump off up dramatically. For reasons of speed, I recommend that if you have low power mode on one of your channels, you ensure it's on on all of the, the channels, because switching that feature on and off can introduce delays. So either keep it always off or always on across all the channels you're using.